<clears throat> Are we watching the trial of Trump or the invisible hand of the cock machine? Koch machine. The shadowy escalations of Koch money and power in the U.S. politics over the past four decades has far outpaced the mainstream media's ability to quantify it to the public. The media deludes itself that it is dealing with a problem by talking about the symptoms of corporate and billionaire money and political com campaigns while ignoring the actual disease of the party of Koch. The rise of Trumpism is merely a symptom of the party of Koch. The violent mob in the Capitol on January 6th attempting to over turn a duly conducted election is merely a symptom of the party of gotcha. If Donald Trump is banned from ever again holding federal political office, and he should be, Congress still has done nothing to deal with the actual disease, the party of Gotch. Charles Gotch has been the chairman and CEO of Gotch Industries since 1967. According to Forbes, in 2020 he ranked as the 18th richest man in the world with a net worth of, worth of 38 Point two billion Charles Koch and the heirs of his late brother David who died in 2019 are the majority owners of Koch Industries, one of the largest private corporations in the world with interests in fossil fuels, refineries, pipelines, coal, chemicals, consumer paper goods, proprietary trading and currencies, commodities, and stocks as well as numerous other pursuits. For the past 40 years Charles Koch has been involved in creating funding a sprawling network of front groups that seek to shrink the federal government in order to gut it of its regulatory powers over corporations and kill off federal programs like the U.S. Postal Service, Social Security, and Medicare because they are popularist and have earned the respect of the American people. Charles Koch also holds semi-annual strategy meetings with like-minded billionaires and millionaires to plan how to sway elections outcome, outcomes to their favor candidates. In 2014, then Senate Majority Leader Harry Reid Reid accused the Koch brothers of trying to fix every election in America to their liking. That was the same year that Koch Industries launched its first ever nationwide marketing campaign, which since that time has enriched media outlets with millions of dollars in ads for its consumer paper products, such as Dixie disposable paper plates, bowls, and cups in its northern quilted and angel soft bath tissue. While Charles Koch has tried to dis distance himself in the media from Donald Trump, he and Koch Industries were deeply incentivized to ensure that Donald Trump had another four years as president because the Trump administration had been packed with Koch friendly operatives. The Koch nonprofit front group that played a major role in the 2016 presidential election was Freedom Partners, which shuttered in 2019. Shuttering and reopening under a new name is standard operation practice by Koch Machine. It was hard to decipher where Freedom Partners began and Koch Industries ended. In 2018, we perused its board of directors. We found that all but one of its board members, board members, was a current or former Koch company employee. According to the Center for Media and Democracy, Freedom Partners ended up with 12 of its former employees working in the Trump administration. Freedom Partners Action Fund, a related organization that, plummeted, that pummeled Democrats in attack ads, had received at least $14 million from Charles Koch and his trust before it shuttered its operations. Freedom Partners had outlined their marching orders for the Trump administration in a formal memo, and their psychophants in the Trump administration quickly marched to the beat. From the withdrawal from the Paris Climate Accord to the massive tax cut for corporations, Trump putting industry cronies in charge of the Environmental Protection Agency was no doubt to address the fact that Koch Industries had been serially charged, including a criminal conviction, with dangerously polluting the environment. On January 13, 2000, the Justice Department and the Environmental Protection Agency announced the largest civil fine ever imposed against Koch Industries to resolve claims related to its more than 300 oil spills from its pipeline and oil facilities in six states. The company agreed to pay the 30 million civil penalty and spend 5 million on environmental projects. Daniel Shulman documented Koch Industries' history of environmental abuses in his 2014 book, Sons of Wichita, How the Koch Brothers Became America's Most Powerful Private Dynasty. Packing the Trump administration with Koch loyalists from Freedom Partners was just the beginning. 
Gotch Industries law firm Jones Day sent 12 of its law partners to staff up key positions in the Trump administration on the very day Trump was inaugurated. Jones Day has since sacked the press release it issued at the time, but you can read it. The reporting on it at the American Bar Association Journal. <clears throat> One of the more outrageous aspects of Gotch Industries raising efforts is to insert itself in political campaign outcomes is its ownership of a company called I360. We broke the news in 2018 that Koch Industries had purchased I360. We obtained the information from an internal newsletter at Koch that was available online from the fact that online help wanted ads for I360 sent applicants to apply at Koch Industries. The company hasn't denied our report reporting over the past two years. We reported the following. The I360 website says that its database now has information on 199 million voters from all 50 states, information on 290 million consumers with 700 or more data points, information on precinct election returns as well as data from the Census, NOAA, the Bureau of Labor Statistics, and geospatial data, individual sentiments, information on candidates and issues from social media operations, and information from its grassroots groups. Read Americans for Prosperity. And paid door-to-door -door knockers who are using a sophisticated handheld device to update the database in real time in the pivotal weeks before the election. But the i360 is far more than just a voter database. It has social media targeting operations and really scary data collection that reaches into pe people's homes. Consider this from their website. For an exclusive partnership with D2 Media Sales, the strategic relationship between DirecTV and DISH, I360 is able to identify households that meet your target criteria and serve ads uniquely to those households. No matter which stations or programs they are watching, with dozens of I360 customer segments pre-matched to more than 20 million DirecTV and DISH homes, campaign, campaigns can now reach their largest addressable TV advertising platform in the nation. One-to-one -one television targeting combines the emotional impacts of TV advertising with the precision and accuracy of direct mail marketing, resulting in the most cost-effective and high-impact buying solutions. And, end quote. A growing number of Republicans running for office avail themselves of the services of I-360. The public has no way of knowing if the fees these Republicans are paying to I-360 for its database and campaign services are competitively priced or whether this cautious subsidiary is providing its serv services at below market cost in order to put its finger on the scale for hard right-wing candidates. Until Congress and mainstream media get serious about investigating Charles Koch and Koch Industries' intrusions into the electoral process, representative government by the people of America will remain a quaint concept.